Sandra. Now, the key to peace in Israel and the surrounding region lies with a one-state solution. That's according to a former Israeli soldier turned peace activist and author who's been visiting Jersey. Miko Peled, who is the author of a book called The General's Son, Journey of an Israeli in Palestine, has been in Jersey as the guest of the local Jersey-Palestine Solidarity Campaign, which aims to campaign for peace and justice for Palestinians. He gave a talk um, at an open meeting at the town hall on Friday evening and ahead of that I spoke to him about why he believes that only a single state solution in which both Israelis and Palestinians live together side by side with equal rights will lead to peace in the region. But he started by explaining how he had come to that conclusion. I was born and raised in Jerusalem, an Israeli family, a family that has been involved in the establishment of the State of Israel from the very beginning. Uh, my grandparents um, were very much involved in the early, you know, the pre-state establishment of the Zionist entity in Palestine. Uh, my father was a young officer in the Jewish militia in Palestine and then became an officer and then retired as a general after the 1967 war. So that's my background. It's a very patriotic Israeli kind of background. So were you brought up thinking that the state of Israel was the way forward for that part of the world? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was the way forward for that part of the world. It was the way forward for the Jewish people. And that we were back, you know, as the descendants of the ancient Hebrews were back now. And this is our land. And uh, absolutely, yes, that's the narrative. Were you in those days aware of the Palestinians in your midst? Well, I became aware of the Palestinians only because uh, my father, after he retired from the military in the you know early 1970s, began speaking about the need to make peace with the Palestinians. Until then, we only knew that there were Arabs, or we called them terrorists, or we called them all kinds of names, but the, the, the word Palestinian never came up. Uh, and then my father suddenly, you know, this retired general who was a very hawkish, you know, his whole life, suddenly started talking about the need to make peace with the Palestinians based on this idea that today we call the two-state solution. But at the time, this was kind of the, just the very beginnings of this idea that the Palestinians should be allowed to establish their own state in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, these two little areas that Israel had just, had just occupied in 1967. And at what point did you think, that's not going to work? I realized that the idea of the two-state solution is not just not going to work, but was really a, it's really a fallacy. Around 2005, for the first time I actually visited the West Bank on my own. You know, I drove by myself. I describe it in the book, in the General Sun. I got into a car and I drove to the small village called Bilin in the West Bank, which has become very well known since. And we, I walked around with some of the, you know, men there from, you know, friends from Berlin, and we walked around and we saw the settlements that were being built on their land for Jews. And I looked at these, and when you say the word settlement, people, I think, get the feeling of like something like a farm or a small little town. You know, this was massive apartment buildings and like, you know, huge building of a city. And I thought, this isn't going anywhere. This has been occupied by Israel since 1967. It's the West Bank. Uh, but it is the area about which they speak as they, or they used to speak as a possible Palestinian state because it's within the West Bank. <laughs> but the building for Jews in the West Bank, just like the building for Jews in all other parts of the country, is so massive and it's always at the expense of Palestinians. Um, and I remember looking at this thinking, they've invested billions and billions of dollars here. They're bringing all these people to come and live here. This is not going away. This whole idea that somehow there could be a Palestinian state is complete nonsense. Nobody really means for this to happen. And so the only other solution is to completely undo this idea of a Jewish state and to have a state for all of its people with equal rights for the Palestinians as well as the Jews. Because you have two nations living there and this reality where you have a Jewish state, but the majority of the population are not Jewish, they're Palestinians, and uh, this pretense that somehow you could have a state for Jewish people in a country where the majority are not Jews is, is absurd. It's, 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 a, it's an apartheid idea. Of course, it wasn't acceptable to me. So that was kind of the shift. It was very, it's a, I can remember the actual moment where, where I realized this. So 
almost in that moment, have you been advocating for the one state solution? I have, yes. I mean, other people have done it way along, you know, realized this much earlier. But for me, yes, from that moment on, it became very clear. And that's what I've been talking about and advocating and speaking about, yes. As a Jew, as someone who was raised as a Jew in the state of Israel, what sort of reaction have you had from within the state of Israel? Fierce. I mean, uh, Israelis don't want to hear this. Even the most liberal uh, Israelis uh, don't want to hear of a possibility where there is no Jewish state. Uh, even though they know fully well that the idea of a two-state solution is science fiction. It's an impossibility. Uh, no Israeli government would ever allow it to happen. They would never. No Israeli government would allow the Palestinians to establish a state within what Jews consider the land of Israel. Uh, which includes the West Bank, of course. But they, they, they argue viciously and won't hear of it. So inside of Israel, there is no room for discussion on this issue. That's Miss Miko Peled, peace activist and author. He was the guest of the local Jersey Palestine Solidarity Campaign, uh, which campaigns for peace and justice for Palestinians. At, he was at the town hall on Friday for a talk entitled Justice and Freedom, the Keys to Peace in Palestine. Uh, later in the program, we'll be finding out why Mr. Peled dismisses claims and concerns that hatred of the state of Israel is turning into a general and growing anti-Semitism. That's a concern that's been voiced over the last couple of weeks across the world, actually, and also here in Jersey. Now, you may remember a couple of weeks ago we heard concerns from the president of the Jersey Jewish congregation that hatred of the state of Israel is now becoming transformed into general anti-Semitism. Well, a former Israeli soldier turned peace activist and author who's been visiting Jersey says he does not believe that this is a problem. Miko Peled, peace activist and author, who's written a book called The General Son, Journey of an Israeli in Palestine. This charts his journey from the son of a military founding family of the state of Israel to an advocate of Palestinian rights. He's been the guest of the local Jersey Palestine Solidarity Campaign this weekend, which aims to campaign for peace and justice for Palestinians. He believes that the key to peace in Israel and the surrounding region lies with a one-state solution where Israelis and Palestinians live Palestinians live side by side. I spoke to him ahead of a talk he gave at the town hall on Friday night, and you may have heard about an hour ago him explaining his journey to this point in time. But I also took the opportunity to ask him about the concerns that members of Jewish communities have across the world, including here in Jersey, about the trend towards anti-Semitism. Before we hear Miko's thoughts on this, let's just remind ourselves what Stephen Regal, president of the Jersey Jewish Congregation, told us a couple of weeks ago. Unfortunately, well, for whatever reason, and, and I, I put it at the door of Israel, who happens to, to win wars too easily, uh, that Israel becomes the vilified state. Um, and that vilification, really and truly, is, is not correct. What it is, is a manifestation of the traditional age-old anti-Semitism, uh, where people can't really say, we don't like Jews, but it's perfectly adequate to say, we hate Israel. Well, here are Miko Peled's thoughts on those concerns. No, I think it's a smokescreen. It's an attempt to change the conversation. Because when the pro-Israeli groups and organizations, be it here in Jersey or in, in, in London or in the United States, it's all the same. They all come up with the exact same arguments. They shift the conversation from the brutality of Israeli policies towards Palestinians to anti-Semitism. And now, instead of discussing the fact that people in Gaza who live five minutes away from Israeli cities lack clean water, lack access to medicine, lack access to, to nutrition, uh, live in terrible poverty, are bombed and, and, and attacked by the Israeli army regularly, now we're talking about whether it's Semitism, anti-Semitism, whether we're anti-Semitic or we're not anti-Semitic. It's, it's, it's an attempt to change the conversation. It's also, it's, it's very childish because when you have no argument, you start calling people names. And it's just kind of an adult, a more mature, perhaps, uh, version of, of calling people names when you have no argument at all. So I don't think it's irrelevant. Uh, I don't think it's relevant. I don't think it's true. I don't think it's, it's there's any, there's any, there's no foundation for this uh, at all. But there is concern among some Jewish communities that, that anti-Semitism is rising and they don't necessarily endorse everything that the state of Israel does and is. Yeah, but this is this is the, the, the two the two issues are, are I mean there's racism everywhere. There's racism against black people, there's racism against Asian, there's racism against now of course the largest or the, 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 the at least in the United I know this is true in the United States, the largest 
portion of, of instances of, of, of racial discrimination and, and hate crimes are against Muslims. Absolutely. Islamophobia is really the issue today. It's not anti-Semitism. But there's racism everywhere, and racism is a part, has always been a part of Western society, and hating Jews has been part of that. So, I mean, there's probably always going to be that. This has got nothing to do with the issue of Palestine. If we are really looking for a world without racism, then we need to take care of, the, of places like the state of Israel where racism is the foundation because the state of Israel is built on a foundation of racism and hatred against the Palestinians. Uh, coming back to the, if you like, the theme for the evening, which is your solution, which is the one state solution, do you think that will ever happen? Well, first of all, it's not my solution. The idea of a single democracy in Palestine with equal rights is a Palestinian idea. This was the initial platform of the Palestine Liberation Organization. And so it's an idea that's been around for a very long time. Uh, so like I said, I'm, I actually joined this quite late in the game. I, I, there's no question in my mind that it's going to happen. There is already a single state in all of Palestine. It's a state of Israel that controls the lives of everybody who lives there. Um, Israeli Jews like myself, we live a privileged life. We have all the rights and, 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 and so forth. Palestinians live under a vastly complicated and confusing set of laws that is run by a massive bureaucracy, partly military laws, partly civilian laws that discriminate against them specifically in all kinds of different ways. Um, so a single state already exists, uh, but it's a single state which is not a democratic state. It's a racist state. It's an apartheid state. It's a state where Jews have exclusive rights. Um, so the transition that we're talking about or the choices that we're talking about are either maintaining this reality forever or doing what they did in South Africa was transforming this, transforming this non-democratic state, this non-democratic regime into a democracy that includes everyone. So changing it from exclusive rights to Jews to including everybody, uh, including the Palestinians as well, who today are the majority of the population, are Palestinians there. Um, so there's no, there's no question in my mind that this process is very far along and that it's not only going to happen, it's inevitable. That's Mikko Peled, peace activist and author. He's been in the island. He was uh, doing a talk called Justice and Freedom, the Keys to Peace in Palestine. Let's find out what the weather's doing now.